The cold and merciless kiss of a hammer pounding against my skull. A ruthless expression of love from a malignant force. An act of violence I can't recall or pinpoint. It left me diseased, broken, and injured. Wave after wave of red flashes blasted the right side of my head. There was heat, and there was pressure and there was pain. The ache came and went like the waves of the ocean. An ocean of molten lava, that is. Expanding and retracting. I was in a void of pure darkness. My brain, the poor rattled thing, it begged me to stay asleep, but the repeated concussive blows traveling from underneath my eye wouldn't let me stay asleep. My entire body screamed at me to wake up, screamed at me to open my eyes and face the music. Every organ of mine cried out in pure agony, begging for me to shake off the sandman's dust from my eyes. My left arm cried the loudest. My left arm was on fire, with every fiber of it slowly being reduced to nothing but soot. Necrosis born because of the buildup of a byproduct of flawed human design, lactic acid. The aching of my form finally pried my eyes open. Everything seemed so, dark and foreign, alien, almost. Strange features were dancing around my tunneled field of vision. The fabric of reality was melting right before my eyes. Different shades of gray and black flowed into each other. A mixture of bizarre goo shaping my perception. Without a warning, another flash of light exploded right behind my eyes. A volcanic eruption inside my head. The pain was unbearable. I could feel an ice pick digging into the back of my skull. Everything started spinning to the sound of a million flies buzzing somewhere in the distance. The digestive tract began working backwards, and I felt the esophageal muscles spasming. My heart burned, my brain was falling apart inside the cranium and everything else was torn to pieces. In an attempt to ease the suffering, I shifted my head backwards. My blood ran cold, the sensations of pins and needles traveling against my skin overtook every other feeling in that moment. The drumming of my heartbeat grew louder by the moment. I was hanging by one hang from the window bars of a fourth store building. My left hand was barely holding on anymore. It began shaking from the strain. Fear kept my other muscles locked in place. Fighting through it was harder than I could ever imagine. The mere act of pulling my right arm upward was excruciating. The bones were broken and covered in blood. I didn't want to die. With every ounce of remaining strength, I pushed my mangled arm upward before grabbing onto the window bars. The cold breeze barely grazing my skin felt like smoldering knives were being shoved into my flesh. Nearly lost my grip. Swinging to the side, I slammed myself into the wall and thought I was going to die from the pain. Wasn't much of an impact. Hands slipped from exhaustion. Fear, mortal fear. Survival instincts took over and forced my abused form to claw at the window ledge with all of its might. I kept falling into those four stores in my head, over and over and over as my body pulled itself into an unfamiliar apartment. Finding myself lying on steady ground didn't make the imaginary cycle of demise leave my mind. Only made it worse more graphic, more detailed. I wasn't falling to my death anymore. 
I was being ripped in half. Beheaded. Compressed into a pile of human waste matter. Obliterated by projectiles. Electrified into dust. My throat slit. My limbs cut off. My face peeled off. Bleeding out. Skull caved in. Crawling alone in an unfamiliar place. Crawling in a pool of blood. Surrounded by corpses. Mutilated corpses, unidentifiable human remains, pieces of meat. Riddled with bullets, cut open, bones exposed, organs harvested, hanging from entrails, splattered on a wall, spine extracted, bones mixed with the wood in the fireplace. The stench of death was violating me as I crawled through the corridors of hell. It forced its way down my throat, threatening to choke me as I crossed a bodiless head with a heart in its mouth. I screamed myself hoarse with fear. A lightning bolt flashed outside. Darkness. Everything stood still. Another lightning bolt flashed, illuminating the room. A flayed figure was right next to me. A bloody hand reached for my face. There was a murmur. Thunder cracked directly above me. A muffled cry for help. Raspy and low. I could feel it grabbing me, its wet fingers digging into my leg. A lightning bolt exploded right in front of my eyes, and silence. Darkness. There was nothing but darkness. An empty void. The light came back on as suddenly as it vanished. I was in a pristine apartment. Dizzy with stress and blood loss. My blood staining some fancy looking rag. Everything was so slow and unfocused. My ears ringing, my body aching, my right arm barely hanging on by a thread of muscle. A layer of red covering my right eye. Breathing hurt. Everything hurt. Death was near. Death came as a high-pitched cackling. My gaze shifted, pushing through volley after volley of stingers coursing through my neck. It just sat there, chewing on a piece of meat. A hyena-muzzled naked man. The unnatural shape of this thing. A grotesque and malignant amalgamation of features. Impure, senseless, and leprous design. Nothing but pure invasive and unrelenting horror. Every fiber in my body moved while my brain remained fixated on the indescribable picture burned into recollection. I ran, I don't know how I far I ran. I have no idea how I got out of there and I don't know where I ended up collapsing. When I woke up, I was at the hospital. My injuries were consistent with a bear mauling. I pretended to have lost my memory, not wanting to remember. I wish I couldn't remember that thing. Unfortunately, that's the only thing I seem to remember these days. Every now and again, it invades my mind and everything else becomes blurry and distant. Every now and again, I can see it standing right across the room from me. Simply staring, and smiling its blood-stained smile. Cackling that hideous high-pitched laughter. Every time I see it, it's getting closer. I can already feel its fetid breath on the back of my neck.